On day six of your 10-day challenge, we're going to have ourselves a bit of a fingers-picking snafu. Well, not a finger-snicking snafu, a finger-picking snafu is exactly what we're going to have. And if you want to become involved in this free 10-day challenge, it is super easy. There's only three steps that you have to follow. Step number one, go to weplayeveryday.com. Step number two, join the Facebook group. And step number three, just go ahead and click on the course guide. It's pinned right to the top of the Facebook group, and it has all the details that you need. I'm talking times replays, tabs, all the information is there. Now, one thing that's very important that I want to share with you right now, speaking of share, we'll get to that in a second, is this 10-day this challenge, we, we're a week into it. We've done five days so far, and there has been some major, major light bulb moments. Aha moments, light bulb moments, small wins. Basically, guitar geeks are learning stuff, and we're all learning together, and it's really just a cool feeling. There's a lot of positive momentum and there's just, there's so much learning and, and sharing happening that I want you to share this with your Guitar Geek friends. And that's super easy to do as well. All you have to do is click on this live video in the upper right hand corner, click share. And then once a little box comes up, hit post. Okay. Click post. And then that'll share it with all your Guitar Geek friends. The more Guitar Geeks we get in here, the better, the more people learning and sharing, the more positivity that's built up. So uh, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Tony Policastro. I'm part of an underground group of acoustic guitar enthusiasts you've probably never heard of. We're not here to play face-melting guitar solos or judge other guitar players. Our purpose is much greater than that. For us, it's about expanding our quality of life through music and having fun with our guitar, not just mastering it. Getting better at guitar is proof that we do have what it takes to be a guitar player which means we can build stronger bonds with friends and create lasting musical family traditions. But if you asked a guitar snob or a music academic, they would turn up their nose and say their way is better. Yet this way of seeing the guitar is changing lives every single day. We follow a specific framework and set of values that keeps us focused on what matters most. Human connection, constant progress, and fun. It's happening, and we call it living the acoustic life. This is our acoustic life, and these are our stories. All right, here we are on day six. It's a Monday. I'm a little under the weather, but that can't stop the 10-day challenge. That's not going to stop the learning that's going to happen. That's not going to stop the amazingness that's going to happen. And, of course, we are here together. And when I say we, of course, I'm referring to none other than Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr., the first, and, of course, Levi Quila, the it. man with the technical plan. Levi. Tony. Gentlemen, thank you Tony. for turning the right knobs, clicking the right buttons, and um, singing Step by Step by New Kids on the Block. Oh, this morning. every day, all day. I was uh, five steps. Can I say something? You can say you something. Give a story here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, guys, Tony yeah. is under the weather, and he 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 smiled for the first time only about three minutes ago. <laughs> so can you give him some hearts and likes? Because he is kicking butt this morning. And I, he's yeah, got a really cool I, lesson for you. I kind of. <laughs> yeah, I, I came in and I was just feeling like you know that you know when you're feeling not great and you just wake up and it takes you a little bit to shed that like overnight accumulation of sick. Well, I'm, I'm right there, and what helped me this morning, Noah was here when I walked in, and he was in a cheery mood. Levi came bolting up the stairs, and also in a cheery mood, and then they proceeded to put on the stereo uh, Step by Step by New Kids on the Block, <laughs> which pretty much catapulted me over the edge. I was initially annoyed, but now I'm here, and I'm happy, and I'm super pumped. Uh, so thank you guys for, for being here. I've got a killer lesson for you today. Um, there's, there's a ton that we have to go over. In fact, there's, it's almost like three warm-ups built in one. But first, Noah, uh, are people hearing okay? Can we give some shout-outs? What's, what's happening over there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, first, I do have to say, step-by-step, uh, step, the first step is we can have lots of fun. Mm -hmm. So I just want to throw that out there. Yes, we got people from to... the authorities on fun. New kids on the block. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, we got uh, Darlene and Peter and Barry. Mike is in from Michigan. Awesome. Um, Jay Anthony is here. Let's see who else we got. Robert and Howard. And if I say this right, uh, either Undine or Undine uh, from Germany. So oh, Germany's cool. watching. Awesome. Thomas. Tim, Rob from Texas, Pat from Denver, Colorado, Ken, Marilyn, and... A whole slew of folks. A whole, whole slew of guitar geeks. Awesome. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for the likes and the hearts and everything. If at any point in time during this live lesson, if you like something, if you have an aha moment, if you have a light bulb moment, go ahead and like it, share it. 
heart it, whatever you got to do to, to make sure the positivity flows, make sure uh, to do that. Now, here we are on day six of our 10 day challenge. It's a Monday. And the cool thing about this 10 day challenge is it mimics, it basically parallels the Tony's acoustic challenge practice framework. So every Monday we'll work on a warm up, which of course is today. Tuesday, we'll go over a lick. Wednesday, we'll learn a scale and then improvise with that scale. Thursdays, rhythm guitar. And then Fridays, we'll study chords within a key and kind of a fun uh, uh, focus on transition way. Uh, so it's a really cool uh, way to kind of get a glimpse of Tony's Acoustic Challenge and, and the daily practice framework that we use in there. And speaking of uh, Tony's Acoustic Challenge, this is the very first day of the open enrollment period. And I'd like to just take a second. Levi is standing by. He's got a list uh, I'd like to welcome some of the new uh, Tony's Acoustic Challenge members to the family. A lot of guitar geeks coming in uh, early in the day. In fact, I just talked to uh, uh, Cleet on one of our message boards, and he said, I just signed up. I'm so pumped, and I welcomed him to the family. Hopefully, he's tuning in here right now. But I know Levi's got a, a, a whole list over there. So Okay, so this is uh, kind of day one of the, uh, before you get into the lesson, Yeah, we have day one of the official Tony's Acoustic Challenge mm -hmm. welcome party. So... <clears throat> let's let's do this. It's gonna be a mouthful. Uh, had my pot of coffee, so let's see if I can do this. Me too. Oh no, I just remembered. I promised <laughs> someone I would pronounce their name right, and they gave me the pronunciation, and now I I don't remember what that was. So I'm gonna butcher that. But I'll come back. It'll hit you. Yeah, I have faith. So as of this morning, between 6 a.m. and now, here's who we have as a new member of Tony's Acoustic Challenge: uh, Alicia, uh, Sarut, Joanne B, Lucas B, Russell Steele. Uh, Ignacio Rui, Filippo, or I'm going to just not do the last names. This is hard. <laughs> Filippo. Um, First name sounds Brad hard. Wright, Michael W, Scott C, um, Sisafin, uh, Chris Hung, Matthew Griffin, Ricky Horton, Adam Popper, Rosemary Bonham, Keith, Sam, Dennis Yonkin, who's been on, uh, I think, every day. So awesome. Nice to have you, Dennis. Yeah. William Catter, uh, Alec McCracken. Love that last name. Rick Farron, Michael Martin, Susan D, Todd B, Ann Newland, uh, Eloy O, Glenn R, Sam P, Anthony L, oh Russ Merritt, Josh Fensel, St uh, Stephen Holland, Robert Salmon, <laughs> Roger Franklin, Paul Craven, David Lee, Marguerite, uh, Carol B, John Morrow, Jason Rogers, Jeff Patty, Raymond Landers, Landes, Brian Lawrence, Mike Lush, Justin L., uh, Charlotte I., Ron Klotz, Jason Berkey, Debbie Wignild. Man, I am just butchering those. But, uh, <laughs> Michael doing great. Roland, Vic they know who Victoria, they are. Jason Hurdle, uh, Roger S., Bill Lone, Jesse C., Ben U., Alan Warfield, Diane Shanklin, Craig Shanklin. Wow, nice. Diane and Craig. Uh, obviously, you're a couple of some. That's pretty awesome. cool. Uh, Larry P, uh, Dionisio, Frank Zaz, Franza, man, that's terrible. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, Silas M, David S, Bernard O, Martin C, Adrian V, James H, oh Robert gosh. F, Rachel B, Brian Wood, Terry Doran, Tim, Eric B, Alan D, Annette C, Greg R, Robert Montgomery, Andrew Fraser, Bud Ferris. Jam Jameson, uh, Jorg C, James Snyder, Cleet Albertson. That's the guy yeah, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I was just talking. Uh, about. Mike Grogan, and then if anybody's signed up, uh, you know, in the last few minutes, we might uh, come back to you here in a bit. Yeah, but yeah, for welcome sure. everybody. This is really yeah, exciting. Absolutely um, welcome. Could not That's be more stoked to have everybody sound on board. Two hands clapping. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Tony, we'll keep track of uh, people signing up. I believe there is a link. Uh, go to Tony'sAcousticChallenge.com. Yeah. And check it all out and sign up. And when you do, we will give you a shout out here on the Daily Challenges. Absolutely. Tony, let's do this. Awesome. Awesome. Let's do. Uh, thank you to everybody who signed up. Wow, that is that is fantastic. Welcome to the family. Uh, Guitar Geeks are uh, clearly uniting. And here we go. Let's get into the lesson today. Here's how it's going to work. Uh, today we are focused on a warm-up. And what we're going to do is I'm going to first kind of give you the, the full uh, helicopter view of the warm-up. I'll play it in context so you can see what you're getting into. And then I'll go ahead and chunk each section of the warm-up down. There's kind of, it's kind of a, almost a three-in-one warm-up today uh, because I wanted you to be fully prepared for what we're going to do uh, throughout this whole week. So I'll go through it in each chunk. 
and then I'll go ahead and play through it in a couple different uh, speeds. I'll do a 60 beats per minute, 80 beats per minute, and 100 beats per minute. Uh, just to kind of give you a gauge of what it sounds like at different tempos. By no means are these tempos uh, a necessity to, to uh, you know, there's no certain tempo you have to get to, to determine if the exercise is a, is a success or not. It's just, uh, just so you can hear what it sounds like. In fact, uh, tempo is not something that I'm gonna stress on this particular warm up. I just want your finger picking fingers uh, whether you're right or left-handed, whatever your whatever hand you're finger picking with, I want that to be comfortable on the strings and kind of get familiar with with the territory that it is um, it is going to cover. So, with that being said, let's let's go ahead and start today's challenge. And of course, if you want to follow along, uh, there is a tab link right beneath the video. It's uh, a pinned comment or a pinned, yeah, a pinned comment right beneath the video. Go ahead and click on that and it'll pull up the tab so you can follow along. And what we're working on today is called the finger picking snafu. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and play through it for you real quick so you can hear what it sounds like and then we'll get into the nitty gritty of it. So here it goes, nothing, the finger picking snafu. Here we go. Uh, one, two. Okay, so that's the exercise in its entirety. And it, it just, you just say, wow, there's a lot, lot going on there. Well, there's actually three different exercises. So let's go ahead and start with line one of the tab. Now, one thing to know, throughout this entire exercise, we're gonna be holding down an E major chord. So let's, let's just go ahead and start there because that's what uh, the, the chord shape I want you to go ahead and get comfortable on right now. Um, now, I make my E major kind of funky, so if you make it different than me, that's totally okay. Chances are you're probably going to make it different than me. Uh, so for, for the E major chord, uh, your index finger will be on the first fret of the G string. Your middle finger, the second fret of the D. You can use your middle or ring for this, for this particular uh, string and fret. And then uh, for me, I use my ring finger on the A string, second fret. And that could be reversed, of course. It's, it's totally okay to reverse it. So first fret of the G, second fret of the D, and second fret of the A. Whether it's index, middle, ring, or index, ring, middle, that's totally up to you. Either will sound just fine. Um, so that's the chord shape we're going to be uh, using for this entire challenge today. Now, for the first line, let's just go ahead and start on the first line. One thing to know is that while you're finger picking, generally speaking, now there's exceptions to every rule. In fact, we'll get to those later in the week. But the thumb is responsible for the bass notes, and the index and middle are responsible for the treble notes, or oftentimes the melody notes. Okay? So this first exercise really gets that, that thumb in a home bass position. So that thumb is responsible for the low E string throughout this entire exercise, this entire first line, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to assign our finger-picking fingers. Okay, again, our thumb's going to be on the low E, index the A string, and middle the D string, okay? And for this first, uh, this first little section, it's going to be two eighth notes and a quarter note, so one and two. Our thumb is going to uh, go on the one count, index the and, and middle the two. Okay, Simple as that. It's almost like as if you're holding a doorknob and you're just turning it. I don't want you to kind of feel like you have to swing your fingers at the strings to hit them. Just place your fingers on the strings and then slowly act as if you're turning a doorknob. Okay, we're, we're looking for the, the least amount of physical movement here that gets us the most amount of tone and volume. And that's the best way I can describe it is, is almost like turning a doorknob. So again, that's the low E, the A, and the D. So it's one and two. And then your thumb's going to come back to that low E string. And in the meantime, your index and middle finger are each going to go down towards the floor one string. Your index is going to end up on the D string and your middle the G and we're gonna mimic that same pattern, but now it's gonna be three and four in terms of the count. So it'll be three and four, okay? 
Okay, so we start out E, A, and D string, one and two, and then it's the E, D, and G string, three and four. Okay, once we're done with that sequence, the thumb's going to again come back to the uh, low E string, and our index finger is going to move to the G and middle finger to the B, and we'll do that same kind of doorknob turning motion. Thumb first, then index, then middle. Okay, after that sequence, our thumb is then gonna go back to that low E string again, index to the B, middle to the high E, same exact motion, thumb, index, middle. Okay, so if I was to count along with this, uh, it would sound like this. One and two, three, and four, one and two, three and four. Okay, and you'll see on that top line, once I get to that, the, where my finger picking fingers are the furthest uh, spread apart, or spread, apart, spread apart the furthest, I'm gonna go ahead and reverse the, the cycle, okay? I'll still go thumb, index, middle, but now instead of my index fingers reaching up and going up the strings, they're gonna come back down, or think of it almost like towards the ceiling. So you'll do the E, B, and high E string, the E, G, and B string, the E, D, and G string, and then the E, A, and D string. Okay, and the reason I'm keeping, uh, I'm having you keep your thumb down here is because I really want that thumb to get used to coming back to the low E string and almost using it as an anchor point. So as I go through this at faster tempos, what ends up happening is that my thumb, as soon as my middle finger kind of fires, my thumb comes right back to that low E string because then I can use that as a reference point and then reach my index and middle finger forward to the next pair of strings. So I want you to just watch my right hand here. I'll try and accentuate it so you can have a look and see what I mean. As, well, just watch for that middle finger to fire. And then I kind of point and headstock towards the camera. Like that? And see if that... Like, oh, okay, I see. Extreme. Extreme, like so. We'll see if that works. I'm not okay. sure. So yeah, but I just yeah, want you to pay attention to the whole thing over. when my thumb... Kind of go back. Okay. We'll try. Yeah. Okay. I, I tried. <laughs> Sorry about the camera angles. So, <laughs> on, on tack, you get good angles, of, of hand, but it's a little hard here with this. So, so. This way? Yep. There okay. You go. So I want you to notice when my thumb actually, or when my middle finger triggers, my thumb's going to come back down to that low E string. So here, I'll run through that exercise. So as soon as that middle finger goes, then that thumb's coming back to the low E string. Now, it's not, you don't have to do that for this exercise to be a success. I just want you to, to know that that can be used as a reference point. Because a lot of times with finger picking, especially when uh, your index and middle are moving around, it's pretty easy to kind of lose feeling of, of where you're at. So that thumb on the low E can become a, a really nice anchor point and almost a reference point for you. So that's that first line of the exercise. I'm going to keep going through the, the exercise here because there's some interesting concepts I want to discuss, and then we'll run them all at the same tempo uh, a little bit later here. But this next line, the second line, this is really more about uh, just, just overall finger picking hand familiarity on the strings, okay? Moving all three fingers, the thumb, index, and middle as a unit. And oftentimes, you know, I get asked a lot, you know, I've been, t I've been taught to use my, my ring finger when I, when I finger pick. Why Can I use that here? Yes, you absolutely can. Uh, the reason I choose to do a, a three-finger approach is, is twofold. Uh, number one, I'm a banjo and a dobro player as well. So that's kind of, the, these are my strong fingers. Uh, but number two, for somebody new that's coming into finger picking, the less moving parts that we have, the better. Uh, we don't have to keep track of all four fingers. We just have to keep track of these three. Okay, so that's why I use the three-finger approach. By any means, if you feel like, well, gosh, my ring fingers, is, I like using that, and that's what I was taught. Please, use that. It's totally fine. Uh, just I wanted to make that quick um, note because that's a pretty common question. So, again, we're going to be holding down uh, an E major chord for this particular exercise. And what we're going to do is just roll through sets of three strings. Okay, starting with our first assignment, our thumb on the low E, index on the A, and middle on the D. And I'm talking about your picking hand here. And we're just going to do a quick roll. Okay, it's a triplet. So triplet, triplet. Your thumb's going on the tri, your index is going on the pull, and then your middle is going on the let. Okay, triplet. 
And then once we finish that little sequence, or we'll call it a forward roll, I guess, move each finger down towards the floor one string. Your thumb's gonna go to the A, index the D, middle the G. Same exact timing, same exact finger sequence. Triple let. Okay, triple let. Thumb index middle. Once you're done there, go ahead and move each finger down again. Thumb is on the D, index the G, middle the B. Again, triplet there, triplet. Thumb index middle. And then for the last one, thumb ends up on the G. Index the B, middle the high E. Same thing there, triplet, triplet. Okay, and one of the things, this, this particular sequence, the second line of the tab, will really, I want you to almost emphasize that, that doorknob turning motion. Uh, again, it's less of your fingers swiping at the strings and more of your fingers resting on the strings. And then as you turn, they release the strings, okay? Minimum physical effort to get the most tone and volume. That's, that's the whole goal here. So the whole second line will sound something like this. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. And then we'll go ahead and go backwards. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. Triple it. Okay. And we want that thumb, again, kind of, we want that thumb to kind of be the, the one that, that breaks the path for us. So when we finish that on the ascending side, when we finish that first triplet, I'm, I'm looking to that thumb to grab that A string right away. Because then that, that signals the index and the middle finger directly where to go. Now, if it's not happening immediately for you, that's okay. This is a skill that's going to take some time, uh, hence the kind of wide range of exercises that, uh, that uh, I'm showing you today, or warm-ups, I should say. Um, re regardless of where you're at with finger-picking, these, these exercises, these warm-up exercises are going to be really good for you. Uh, in terms of if you're just starting, they're great to just get familiar. Uh, you get your fingers on the strings, get them kind of moving around, and get them familiar again with the territory that they're going to cover. If you finger picked for a while, rhythmically, there's a couple little, uh, um, well, snafus, hence the name of the exercise. There's a couple little snafus in there. Uh, the first particular series, it's one and two, three and four, so it feels a little staggered. The second series, the one I just went over, is triplets. So playing those in time is, is, a, is a challenge in and of itself. And this last one will directly parlay into the blues rhythm we're actually going to learn on Thursday. Uh, but that's, that's a ways down in the week. Uh, so let me go ahead and get into this very last line of the tablature. Again, we're holding an E major chord throughout this whole thing. If you're at any point in time during this exercise or, or you taking this into your own practice routine, if you feel like, oh gosh, you know, I'm really sick of hearing an E major chord, you can pick any six string chord. And what I mean by that is any chord that when you strum it, you strum all six strings. It could be a G major, it could be an E minor, anything like that, or it could even be a C with that pinky up on the third fret of the low E. Any six string chord will work really well with, with these particular warm ups. So let's go ahead and look at that last line. And again, E major chord, we're gonna go ahead and hold that down. And all we're going to be doing for this particular exercise is pinching our, in, our, our thumb, index, and middle all at the same time on kind of an eighth note pulse. So we're going to start, again, finger assignments. Uh, thumb is going to be on the low E, index, the A, middle, the D. And we're just going to do a one and two and, okay? One and two and. One and two and. And then what I want you to do is go ahead and reach your index and middle forward one string. So your thumb is now on the low E, still, I should say. <laughs> index is on the D and middle is on the G. And you're going to go ahead and do another kind of series of four eighth notes there. This will be the three and four and count. So that'll sound like this. Three and four and. Okay. Thumb stays on that low E. Index goes up a string. Middle goes up a string. Now the index is on the G, middle, the, the B string, same exact eighth note pulse, one and two and. Thumb stays on the low E, index goes up to the B, middle of the high E, and then we'll do another series of four eighth notes, three and four and. Okay, once you reach that high point, we're gonna go ahead and repeat that again. One and two and. Drop the index and middle a string each, so now you're on the G and the B string, respectively, with the index and middle. One and two and. Drop the index and middle one string again. Index is now on the D, middle of the G. And then drop it one more time. Uh, index the A, middle the D. OK. 
Okay. So this gets those the, the the index and middle finger kind of reaching for the other strings and 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 being able to find the other strings with with ease. Now, let me say this. A, a very, very common question is, I have to look at the strings to see where my fingers are going. Is that okay? Yes, absolutely it's okay. There's no other way to know <laughs> whether you're hitting the right string or not unless you actually look and see what you're doing. But I will say this, once you're comfortable looking and finding the right strings, try and test yourself. Think of it as a challenge or a game almost and, and look away and see if you can do it. You know, look away move your hands, you know, go through the exercise, and then at some random point, stop yourself and see if you're on the right string or the right set of strings. It's a great way to start training yourself and building that confidence that, hey, as I develop this muscle memory, my fingers are actually landing on the right strings. But it's completely okay to look when you're first starting out. It's, it's actually really hard to, to not look. <laughs> and I'd, I'd rather you have success right off the bat than feel frustrated, okay? So start by looking at, make sure your, your fingers are lined up. If you have to hold your guitar at an angle like this, do so to start, okay? I don't want you to, to keep doing that. But just to make sure your fingers are lined up, hold it a little bit of an angle so you can see the, whole, the plane of those six strings and see where your fingers are going. Once you feel like you're solid on that, bring it back to normal playing position. Again, I don't want this to be your normal playing position. It's not good for your fretting hand wrist. But for starters, just as you're locating those strings, this is totally fine. But again, as you work through the exercise, move to normal playing position. You can still look a little bit and then slowly draw your gaze away from the strings and see how that goes. So. Uh, let me go ahead and run through this exercise. I'll start at 60 beats per minute, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through each of the three exercises seamlessly. Uh, let me say this as a quick disclaimer. You do not have to do that, okay? You can pick one of the lines. You can pick all of the lines, two of the lines. It doesn't matter, okay? Just, just target what you feel will benefit you the most, okay? But there's no pressure to run one line into the next seamlessly. So let me go ahead and run through this. This is going to be at 60 beats per minute. I'm going to make sure my volume's up here. Uh, and we'll go ahead and get this rolling. Two, three, four, one, two, three. So that was 60 beats per minute. I'm going to go ahead and jump up 20 beats per minute now to 80. Again, you, th there's no requirement of speed here, okay? And if the metronome's throwing you off and you're like, whoa, 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 can't do it, it's okay. Just ditch the metronome, okay? Just work on the basic exercises, kind of get comfortable with them, and then slowly introduce the metronome. But again, no, no speed requirement necessary. This is just to show you what's possible at different speeds. So this is 80 beats per minute. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's 80 beats per minute. One quick note, too. As you'll notice, uh, as I start raising the speed, those triplets feel like they come really fast and furious. Okay, That's because for every click, I'm actually playing three notes. It's triplet, 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 triplet. I'm going to go ahead and count that, or rather uh, uh, say that as the metronome goes so you get a, get a vibe of where those triplets at, actually fit with the click. So I'm going to go ahead and start. This is 80 again. Two, three, four. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. 
So that's that's kind of how those triplets uh, sync with the metronome. If you feel like, whoa, those are coming fast. They are, because there's a lot of notes in a little space. Uh, so let's go ahead and bump it up to 100. Uh, for those of you who want to really be speed demons, I'm going to go through it at 100 beats per minute here. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Hundred beats per minute, pretty good. Not bad, not bad, right? Solid, the, yeah. the click, impressive. The click feels. Um, it's kind of like I'm listening to the click under uh, water right now. It's kind of <laughs> that's how my head is feels. Is that because of the, the hair is over your ears? It's or? because of the hair over yeah. my ear. Correct. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so again, <clears throat> I just want to make very, very. I just want to make really, really clear that when I bring the metronome out. That's just to give yourselves a gauge of where you're at. It's not a measurement of success or pass or fail. There's no pass or fail here. If you're brand new to this, this exercise, there's a lot of just overall discovery in terms of your finger picking hand and where it sits on the strings. If you finger pick for a while, this exercise is full of rhythmic variation and just kind of overall movement. So there's a lot to be pulled out of this exercise. So I don't want you to feel like I can't do this. You absolutely can, and if you feel like it's too much, pare it down. Pick one line. Pick one little section. That's totally fine as well. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, uh, I want to I get to some questions, and I, have, I just want to talk about the TAC open enrollment as well. Um, but I also want to encourage you to uh, like and heart this, and if you feel like there's a friend of yours that maybe says, I want to play guitar, finger picking sounds neat, but I don't think I could ever do it. Please share this with them because I think this is a great starting point to just get their fingers on the strings and get them comfortable with it. Uh, so let's let's hit a couple questions and I'll talk about tack enrollment if that's a, if that's a good enough flow for you guys. Yeah, Noah, do you uh, do you have any questions over there? Yes, I do. I'm waking Eli. up. I'm waking up. Yeah, good. Before Did you just say your honor before you go go? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I will say uh, I've got a few people to welcome here. Oh, cool! While you were teaching that some people snuck in they were kind of oh, cutting class i see what and, they did uh, signing up yeah well, well you can catch the replay so, it's going to be uh, on your tack daily practice as well so you, you'll, you'll be able to catch it so i'll just i want to welcome peter devault gary t awesome uh, kurt ginter richard bullock and douglas coobs awesome welcome, welcome guys thanks yeah. for thanks for hopping on board very very exciting um, just, uh, I think we've got three days left, uh, in the enrollment window. Yeah. So, so get on it. We want to, we want to rattle your name off here, uh, on tomorrow's Absolutely. live. I mean, at, at some point in time, I will find some sort of party hat to wear. Yeah. I mean, it's going to happen in one of these upcoming days. I can't say when I'll join you, you know, and if all you have is like a Santa hat, yeah. you know, <laughs> No, do you have questions? <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. He still does. <laughs> so uh, Larry had asked, how long should he warm up before starting to play? Great question. Uh, so uh, this is the way that I like to do it. Everybody will treat warm-ups a little bit differently, but this is kind of the way that I, I prescribe. Um, first of all, let me say it's a huge win, uh, the fact that you're like, I need to warm up before I, before I play. That's that's a great mindset to have because the more that the more um, uh, kind of nimble you feel going into what you're going to work on for that particular day, uh, the better your success will be and the, kind of the better um, attitude you'll have towards it. At least that's what I've found. So my my prescription for warm ups is you know I like to do a new warm up each week. So at the beginning of the week, I'll go into the archives of my brain and devise some sort of demonic warm up that pushes my fingers to the max. And I'll spend some time learning it, about 10 minutes or so, however long it takes for me to get comfortable with it. And then for the remainder of the week, I'll use that warm-up right before I play. Okay, so that first day, it, well, let's just equate it to this week, Mondays, I'll learn it in, in 10 minutes. Okay, and then I'll go ahead before, what I, before each uh, subsequent practice session, I'll go ahead and run through it maybe three or four times just to keep it in my fingers, at, but most importantly, to warm me up. So uh, on the front end, a little bit more time with the warm up, but as far as, you know, prior to your general playing session, if you do uh, like a focused one or two minutes of the warm up, that's actually a really long time. If, in fact, if, if, if I was, 
if I was a really truly evil person, I would just play this metronome for two minutes straight, and we'd all feel how long two minutes actually is. Um, so, yeah, two minutes, two one or two minutes before you sit down and play something new uh, is a great place to start. But in learning that warm up, uh, a good ten minute investment is is probably probably going to be pretty good. All right, I'm done. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, no, I got that. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, doing right over there, Tone. I'm doing. I'm. You know, I'm feeling better as this goes on. But you're doing good. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I really am. I'm feeling better. Okay, so Phil asks. I noticed you were using your index and middle finger in that order, both up and down on the strings. Mm -hmm. Is this generally how it's done? Uh, so there's. Okay, there's a lot of. Let me say the most the most basic finger picking rule, the kind of the base uh, uh, rule that everybody starts with is that the thumb will tackle the E, the A, and the D string, the index, the G, and the B, and the middle finger, the high E. Generally speaking, that's the rule. Okay, but there's a lot of exceptions uh, with finger picking and and really truly uh if we even look back to last week when we were, were looking at those mini chord shapes a lot of times that people are like why would you bring your thumb down to the g string there's, there's no point in doing that your index finger has that well if i'm using those little mini chord shapes uh things that we were using last week let's see uh, my thumb is is really at home down there and i, w- I want yours to be as well um that's why I would bring my thumb down there. So I will say that that rule that I stated before is kind of the base starting point, but there's so many different uh, exceptions to that rule. In fact, we're going to go over some of those exceptions this week. Uh, the lick that you're going to learn tomorrow has your thumb involved on almost... It has your thumb involved quite a lot on, on not its home position strings. So this is just to get your uh, picking hand comfortable across all the strings. Uh, and, and generally, I'll say that for me, the thumb rarely goes on the B or high E string, although it happens every once in a while if I'm doing something single note. Sometimes my thumb will go up there. It's, it's, it's dependent on tone as well. But as far as a, as a base rule, thumb tackles the E, A, and D, index, the G, and the B, middle, the high E. But there's plenty of room for interpretation and, and uh, bending of that rule. All right, Kirby just chimed in. Uh, Tony, do your index and middle fingers glide across the top of the strings, or do they get a bit under the string and pull up? Oh, that's a fantastic question. Um, so... It's, this, this actually is a great segue because it, depending on the tone you want, okay, um, generally speaking, if I'm playing like a bluesy centric, uh, uh, something that I want bluesy sounding with a little bit, a little bit more s- kind of a thud, um, I'll have my fingers actually kind of push on the strings. Uh, so, you know, I, the best way I can relay this is, you know, if my fingers are in position and I take them away, I see a dent in my fingers across all the, uh, rather I see a dent uh, across all my fingers where, the, where they were touching the strings. And I only move them slightly from that. So there's enough pressure uh, that my fingers are putting on the strings to kind of push the string into the pad of each of those fingers. And then when I move them away, just that enough is what provides the, the sound and kind of that plucking sound. So it's almost as if I'm pushing into the string and then letting it roll off my fingertip or, or the pad of my thumb. Um, you can get much uh, kind of get, you can dig in more and get your finger underneath the string, but it's going to be a much more snappy sound. Uh, I'll kind of give uh, an example here. I'm just going to play a basic. Uh, I'm going to vamp over an E chord, and I'll use that kind of pushing the pad of my fingers into the string, and then I'll do more of a plucking where the the fingers go under the string. So this is just the pads here right now. So that's just the pads. Now, if I go into more of a plug, I'll get more volume, but I also get more snap on the string. Uh, so it's really dependent on the tone that you want. Um, there's some, oh, there's a uh, blues guy that I just came across, and I totally spaced his name. It's actually one of my old bosses, Ted Parrish who I uh, used to work under in uh, uh, Old Town School and folk music in the store. Uh, He later opened up a store in Viroqua, Wisconsin. 
and I posted a video of this blues guy, and he's like, oh, that's my favorite, and I never do that. Uh, but he, I'll, I'll, I'll have to leave the name in the comments because I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but he's, he's a great example of kind of that plucking, that kind of sound, where it really snaps against the fretboard. Whereas if you just use the pads, it's a little bit more thunky and thuddy. But either way is okay, it's just a matter of the tone that you want, for sure. All right, Dustin. Prior to today's lesson, I've been practicing with my thumb and all four fingers on my picking hand. Am I creating a monster, or is this a useful exercise? Totally useful exercise. You're not creating a monster at all. Um, this, uh, you know, again, I focus on the three-finger approach because it's, it's the least amount of moving parts for somebody that's brand new to finger picking. Uh, and for a lot of old-time blues, uh, it's really, you could almost get away with just doing a two-finger approach. Um, but if you're using all four, that's totally fine as well. It's really what's comfortable for you. And if, as long as you're getting a good tone, exhibiting proper technique, and keeping tempo, the kind of the three T's, then there's nothing wrong with it at all. And I, I, that's kind of the, the, the rule I use when, whenever somebody asks me a question uh, regarding, you know, I'm approaching it this way. It's a little outside, you know, may, might, be a little outs, might be a little bit outside of, of what I'm teaching. But as long as the tone's there, the technique's there, and the tempo is kept accurate, that's totally fine. So using the, the four-finger approach is totally good. And, Tony, the name of that guy was, if I got it right, is it Sam Chanton? Yes. Yes, that's yeah. correct. That's okay. correct. Thank you. Who, who, who chimed in? Oh, I looked it up. Oh, you did. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank I, you. I, I tried. <laughs> good. Thank you very much. I, I try to be that. a good little helper. You're... <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a reference. That's an Acoustic, Acoustic Tuesday, Tuesday show. reference. <laughs> Episode I, I think it was also 22. It was 21 or 22. It was in a couple. Yeah. yeah. It kind of came back to haunt me. Basically, I, I didn't mean to, but I, I felt like I threw Levi and Noah under the bus. He called us his little helpers, but I mean, you know, to your, to your credit, to your credit, I mean, we do help you. That's true. That's kind of our role. I we know. We're here to support you. But you guys aren't little. And it was the holiday season. Yeah, so it was kind of, you know, a little elf reference, maybe. Thanks for, uh, <laughs> thanks for walking me through that, guys. I appreciate it. Okay, what else you got, Noah? You're welcome. All oh. right. All right. Um, so that, that's kind of pretty much what I got so far. Um, hold on. I think I got one here. From Julie, I learned to do a roll with the image that your picking hand peels away from the strings. Oh. How yeah. do I bring my hand closer so it doesn't look like I'm trying to take the strings off? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, so, uh, um, yeah, if, if you just hold a chord down and you kind of are, are pulling your fingers away, that's a, that's a lot of movement, right? So what I like to eventually translate the feeling of that doorknob turning or kind of peeling away with just kind of keeping your your um, palm the, the larger portion of your hand keeping that still and letting gravity kind of do its work on the thumb and then as far as the index and middle those two just really small movements almost think like um, well kind of like if it's uh, you know is it thing in the Adams family yeah, the With hand. With the hand, yeah. Mm -hmm. How he kind of gets around the floor, da 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 da, da you know, that guy. Uh, <laughs> Levi's shaking his head. <laughs> it's, it's almost that kind of motion, um, but on a smaller scale. So if, if, like, if there was a really, like, if, if you had a pet rat and it had a back itch, you'd just go in with two little fingers and kind of scratch his little itch. Uh, that's what the index and middle would be doing. Real small movements there. And then as far as the thumb, again, gravity would kind of do its work. Let the weight of the hand, let, let the thumb kind of fall off the string. And then the index and middle is more of kind of a, an, uh, um, yeah, like a little scratching motion almost. It, it, it's going to take a little bit. I want you to experiment with it. But if you ever find yourself, if you feel like you're swiping at the strings and, and using like your, the whole length of your finger, that's kind of a red flag that you're not on the right track. So kind of keep a, a more of a closed palm when you're doing that roll and see if you can condense that movement into that, into that uh, space. Okay, and last one for now, Tony. John asks, um, I, well, he says and asks, I use 12-gauge strings, acoustic, and it makes me really have to pull. Should I use lighter gauge? Uh, it's, really, it's really up to you. You know, one of the things that you'll find uh, with, with string gauges I'll try, I'll try my best to generalize here. This is, yeah, I'll try my best to generalize. So the lighter the gauge, 
Generally speaking, the lower the volume, but it hangs on to sustain a little bit. Whereas the heavier the gauge, you'll get a much louder initial note, but it'll decay quicker. Now that being said, there's also kind of the, the physical aspect of the guitar to keep in mind. Whereas, you know, if you're on a 12 gauge string and you lighten up the string gauge, that means that there's less tension on the neck, which means effectively the neck is going to start to kind of push back a little bit. Okay. Uh, the headstock will go, you know, think of it as almost pushing behind you. Uh, it could introduce some buzzing and some playability issues. Um, it's not structurally bad for the guitar. Let me say that. If you go to a lighter string, it's not going to like mess your guitar up at all. But you might have to tweak the truss rod a little bit to accommodate for the, uh, for the lesser tension uh, in terms of if you lighten up the tension, chances are you'll have to loosen your truss rod uh, to keep it playable and buzz free. Whereas if you raise the tension on the neck or if you raise the gauge of the strings, you'll have to actually tighten the uh, truss rod a little bit. Uh, but don't, you know, I would say experiment first and then make adjustments later. Don't, don't, you know, take your guitar to the shop and say, okay, I'm going for light strings, full-blown setup. Just experiment first and see if you like the feel of the strings. And then if you really feel like they, they dial in your tone, say, okay, I like these lighter gauge strings. I'm going to go get my guitar set up specifically for these strings. <clears throat> so, Tony, I've got, yeah. uh, I spent most of the morning talking to a bunch of uh, people on the Tony's Acoustic Challenge enrollment page answering some questions. So I have some oh, really... Great. Uh, I've got all the top questions that I think we should answer. Sure, but, sure. But uh, but two things. Yeah. First, I think you should give people a walkthrough so they know what oh, yeah. Tony's Acoustic Challenge Absolutely. is all about. But there's a there's a there's a huge question going on among people, uh -huh. and it's about what you're playing there, that guitar. And I oh. thought I know that there's a pretty crazy backstory to that guitar. And maybe, yeah. Maybe we can come back to that after yeah. after this little. Let segment. me do a quick walkthrough, and I'll tell you this. Actually, this this guitar. Uh, if it could talk, would tell a story, but I'll talk for it here in a second. <laughs> but let me um, let me first give you a walkthrough for uh, a walkthrough of Tony's acoustic challenge. Um, as I mentioned before in these in these live lessons, what we're doing here on the ten day challenge really parallels what happens inside Tony's acoustic challenge um, in terms of the practice framework and everything. Uh, so so if you if you're coming to this challenge and you feel like you're brand new to the guitar and you're really digging it, or if you're coming to the challenge and you've, you've played for a while but you're in a rut, you just need something new to play and this has helped you, I want you to keep that positive momentum going after the challenge starts. So let me give you a sneak peek into Tony's Acoustic Challenge and, and, and show you how this can be a pretty seamless segue. Uh, so as you log in, you'll go to your home page. There's a calendar on the bottom that keeps track of when you logged in and practiced. And then in the top, you'll see the daily exercise. Just click on that and up pops a video. Okay, and just like we're doing on these, these, uh, the, the, the 10 day live challenge, um, I'll go ahead and start it with, I'll play through it just to give, give you the context. I'll do an explanation, breaking it down into little bits, much like we've done here, and then I'll go through and play it slow, medium, and fast. Now, the cool thing is that all of these are separate videos. So if you want to really dig deep on the explanation, you can go right to that and listen to it and loop it and, and what have you. And more importantly, if you're, if you're targeting a specific speed or you're like, okay, I'm at 60 beats per minute, I really wanna sit with this and, 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 and nail it, uh, the video loops. So I'll ju it's just me playing the exercise and it just loops. And that's for all three speeds. So that's kind of the beautiful thing about uh, the, the daily lesson page. Um, and then above it, you'll have access to the tab, uh, much like you do here, but it's way more, it's, it's a little bit more convenient. It says tab and it just, it pops up right in another window. Uh, you'll have a chance to actually download the lesson. So if you're going on a trip or, you know, you want to work on it in the car while your spouse drives, um, drive them nuts a little bit, uh, you can do that. You can download the full lesson. And then also there's a chance to favorite it. So as you're going through the week, uh, if something really catches your eye and you're thinking, man, I, I kind of got this, but I want to come back to this because I really dig it, you can go ahead and favorite it. And that'll allow you to uh, kind of curate your own favorites and, and almost design your own daily practice. Uh, beyond that, within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, there's also the Academy, which is a great uh, place to go and level up your skills. Let's say you're new to flat picking. You've never done it before. You've always played finger picking. Well, you can go to the Academy and learn how to flat pick. And the same thing for finger picking. And really the same thing for a, a, a number of other styles. Slide guitars, there's a... There's a um, kind of a, a skills area or a technique tune-up area where uh, work on hammer-ons, pull-offs, and things like that. Um, and the cool thing about the academy is that there's, there's a success path. So you start on foundation one, 
and you go ahead and, and uh, do, a, do a course there in Foundation One. Once you complete one of those courses, it unlocks the next level. So that unlocks foundation two. Once you do one of those courses, it unlocks the next foundation. So there's a ton of stuff in there. And the cool thing about the success path is that all along the way, you're learning stuff and, 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 and broadening your skills, which is, is, which is exactly what the academy is for. Uh, not to mention the absolutely amazing guitar geek community within Tony's Acoustic Challenge. It's, it's, um, I, I have never seen anything like it. It's not just a community of like, hey, what are you playing today? Uh, it's, it's, it's that plus a, a million. <laughs> it, it, there's people posting uh, songs that they're working on, performances that they're doing, uh, sharing artists that they, that they just found out about. It's really a, 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 a hotbed of activity, and it's positive, it's nurturing, and it's really uh, the most supportive environment. So it's, it's just a really kind of a, a, a killer aspect of the site that's really tough to, it's tough for me to describe. It's, it's better to experience, really. It's, it's, it's something like I've never seen, uh, to be honest. So I will say uh, over the weekend, there were a lot of people uh, asking questions within this group, this Facebook group. Yeah. And there are also uh, TAC members in this group. So feel free, if you're on the fence, feel free to just ask a question in the group. Oh, um, yeah. Also, Noah and I are over on the enrollment page yeah. uh, in live chat, so you can ask a question there. But the uh, the, the, the group is a great way to get um your stuff, your questions answered. And I've got uh, a few here, Tony, if we could maybe try to gang up and, and answer these. Yeah. Um, the first question that has been coming up a lot uh -huh. is if I start out with the quarterly, can I then switch to annual later? Absolutely. That's not a problem at all. I mean, I, if, if you're on the fence and you're like, I'm going to try out this quarterly thing, go ahead and try it out. But if, if later you decide, you know what, I want to become a, an annual membership uh, holder, that's totally fine. All you have to do is, uh, um, can you do that right through billing, or do you yeah, have to you just email? go right through under your uh, profile photo in the upper right uh, when you're logged in? Oh yeah, you yeah. Go yeah. to billing and account, and you can just click a button and uh, switch billing right there. And the reason people are asking is because it's uh, it's a lot better <coughs> deal if you go annual. But some people don't want to just jump right in and go annual. They want to yeah. try it out first. So if you want to start small, do a quarterly, and get a feel for it, yeah, then you can just go jump in all by yourself and go switch to annual. And when you do that, uh, if there's time left on that quarterly membership that you signed up for, um, it will prorate that amount over to annual. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, all right, next one, and this is this is all you, Tony. Uh, this one comes up a lot. Uh -huh. uh, it, it can seem sometimes that Tony's Acoustic Challenge is is really only for beginners. Um, and this this has been answered within this group by a member, by the way. Um, but in in what's your take on you know who this is for? Beginner, intermediate, advanced? How would you describe? Yeah, it? I mean, I, I like to I like to think that it's really for uh, either the beginner or somebody that's played for a while. Um, on the beginner end of things, if you're coming in attack and you're you're seeing you know uh, the daily practice and the academy and, and all these different things that you can do, I would suggest focusing your efforts on the academy. It's a great place to build a good solid foundation that you can bring to the daily practice. Okay, that's that's for the beginners. But say for for somebody that's played a bit, they know they know their chords, they they can play a couple songs or what have you. Um, I think tech's a great place because it actually helps you develop your playing habit. Um, that's one of the hardest things to do, but if you have, you know, like, like I, I showed on the, the walkthrough, there's, there's an accountability uh, element to Tony's Acoustic Challenge that's, that's right there when you log in. So you can see your kind of your, your playing history. But beyond that, diving into the daily exercise, much like we've done in this 10-day challenge that, you know, regardless of the exercise presented, there's something to pull out of it, okay? And, and, I, and I teach the same way on the site in that, you know, if it's a if it's a simple warm up, I'll show alterations so that if somebody says, "Oh gosh, I can get this no problem," I'll actually give you something that will that will challenge you, uh, be it speed or a rhythmic variation or something like that. Beyond that, there's always something new to discover. Okay, every Wednesday you'll have a chance to improvise, and that right in and of itself is is for all levels, okay? Even if you know a scale already, you're gonna get a chance to, to play over a backing track for two, three minutes, and you can loop that over and over and over again. In fact, this last week, there was, <laughs> there was a bluesy backing track, and some of the members were saying, 
yeah, I started out with my 10 minutes, and pretty soon it was like 45 minutes later, and I was still jamming along to this track. Uh, but, but really, truly, there's always something new to discover. So um, I would say any, any level is really welcome, and there's something for everybody. So before we go to the next question, I think I got this pulled up. I'm just going to read this response here from uh, a member. So this, this question was posted here in the, in the uh, Facebook group, and then a member answered. His name is uh, Richard Carmichael. Um, first of all, the question is, how advanced does TAC become? Is it just for beginners, or does it go through intermediate and more advanced players? So then Richard Carmichael says, uh, I have been a member for three years and never get bored. I have learned so much. There's always something for everyone and plenty of challenges that push you beyond your limits, no matter what your skill level. There are lots of beginners, and there are many people like me who have uh, been learning guitar for 20 years, and there are some super talented people with mad skills who stick around because of the amazing community, and they continue to learn things all the time from Tony and his awesome crew. It's just, uh, anyway, oh, uh, the little it, helpers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then uh, Richard goes on to say, "It is a great deal just to be a member, and they work really hard to keep it fun, interesting, and beneficial for everyone. You can try it for three months, and if you don't like it, you can go elsewhere and try something else." Um, I have watched this community grow from just a few hundred lost guitar souls into over 5,000 <laughs> avid members from all over the world. There is a good reason for that. Uh, Tony, Levi, and Noah have worked long and hard to build something really great. We are all becoming the musicians that we have always wanted to be. Give it a try. It is worth the time and money as long as you put the time and effort in. Uh, so I think that's a great comment from that's, Richard, and wow. thanks for all the kind words. But yeah. I think it also just gives some backstory and context from someone who has actually been in there absolutely and been around it for a while yeah um tony the next question i'll just hit this super quick yeah uh, that we tend to get is uh you know is the how do you guys handle the payment is it a secure uh payment scenario uh yeah we we actually don't handle any credit cards uh, ourselves it all goes through stripe.com which is what essentially powers uh the the internet you know stuff like <laughs> pinterest kickstarter.com um, all these huge uh, mammoth companies use Stripe, so that's who we use, uh, and it's very secure. It is the most secure. Um, and then uh, what methods of payment do you take? You know, all the major credit cards, Visa, MasterCard, uh, American Express, Discover. Does anybody even use Discover anymore? Um, and then you I don't can, know. <laughs> you, can check out, you can check out using PayPal as well. Uh, okay, last question. I think yeah. this one might be for you. I can't read my my writing here. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, this one's simple. So, you know, there is a 60 day guarantee. Uh, mm -hmm. So then the next question is always, well, how does the refund and canceling work? So can you describe that? Well, that's, it's, I mean, it's super easy. You can cancel, you can, you can stop be becoming a member. I think it's like two clicks. Uh, you can, you can stop being a member, but uh, as far as the refund, all you have to do is hit Noah up at support at Tony And uh, it's no questions asked. You know, I really, I, I want this to be a perfect fit for you. And I want this to, to really help bolster your, your daily playing habit. Um, and I want it to be an awesome experience. So I, I would encourage you to try it out. And again, if it's, if it's not a fit for you, no, no worries at all. Just email Noah support at Tony and we'll take care of you. Yes, yeah, so you can do that two ways. So if you don't want to remember or have to remember what that email address is, uh, Noah is always like one email away. There's there's a, a tab at the top of the site at all times um, called support. You just click on the support oh, yeah. link, and then you just fire a message away, and Noah will get it and uh, and take care of you, whether you have a question, need some help, or if, if you're uh, indeed emailing about <coughs> a refund request. So just really simple. And, just, and to cancel, you do it all, all by yourself. You just click the link uh yeah. there's, there's like two or three clicks in there uh, so it's all really easy it's not like uh who are we talking about the other day sirius oh uh, yeah or, or xm you know <laughs> yeah, where they're just xm like, radio you can't cancel oh. they hound you when you try yeah to that was insane. a rough experience i mean i i dug i dug listening to the the satellite radio but it was very difficult to uh to, to yeah, try not and like not that. listen to the radio it's not like that it's super super easy now, Tony <clears> doesn't want people you know yeah, he's not going to like trap people in if they don't like it. Like, no, your, I, your main thing is like, I want people to absolutely love it. Yeah, totally, absolutely. I mean, I want you to come in and have a great time. I I think a lot of the members do that, but I of course want you to be the judge of that for sure. So those are all the hot questions that I've been getting, uh, and I'm sure Noah's been getting a lot um, through support as well. Uh, Noah, do you have any other ones there, or did we, do you think we hit the the big ones? No. Nah, yep, I was working on the checkout page in just answering some questions over there um but i think you did 
Sound, okay. Sounded pretty thorough. I'm sure there will always be, you know, one nuanced question coming in here or there. And, yeah, and we'll get you, you know, ask that question on the uh, the live chat on the page, just tonysacousticchallenge.com. There should be a link on this on this post. Um, and we've got three more uh, other than the ones that I just mentioned. So we've got Matthew Moss just jumped in. We've got awesome. Shannon uh, Isley. It's so close to Isley, or Isla, you know, which is spelled Isley. Uh, so Shannon, Michael P., and uh and douglas so that's awesome. that's their everybody. actual last name is it's, i is isla it's i-s-l-e-y oh. so it was so close that i was like i wonder if shannon likes scotch anyway <laughs> uh so i know we've got small wins but um you were going to talk about your guitar yeah so what i'm playing it's a 1935 uh martin single o 17 all mahogany uh, Brazilian rosewood bridge, bone through saddle, ebony pins, Brazilian rosewood fingerboard, small dot inlay, uh, inch and I think this is one's an inch and eleven sixteenths uh, nut width. Um, it actually has new tuners on it, uh, the Stumac vintage style tuners. But uh, this is just an awesome guitar. Um, lame word to describe it because it's so much more than that. Uh, it flat picks really well. It finger picks great. Uh, plugged in, it actually sounds unbelievable. Uh, but more importantly, this guitar, uh, so I bought this used, and the top has its original finish on it, but the back and sides have been completely refinished uh, because this guitar was actually in pieces. Um, it, it was found in a barn in Helena, and uh, they brought it into um, Marcus Engstrom, a great luthier. He's, I don't believe he's working on guitars anymore, but it just really does fantastic work. Um, and it had, let's see, well, there's, there's two patched holes here. There's a hole here, a hole here. Uh, numerous side cracks. There's a crack here. The top was separated from the whole body. Um, where else was there? There's another hole. Maybe it was on the back. There's a hole here that was filled. Uh, basically, this guitar was in shambles. Uh, another crack on this side. Vic G says 17 or 15? 17. 17. And... Um, it's just, it, it came in, I, I, of course, became the owner of this instrument um, after it was repaired, and I was, of course, able to play it, but um, it is just a ridiculously fine example of an instrument. Um, the neck is so comfortable. It's super narrow down by the nut, and then it actually tapers as you get close to the body, which I found very comfortable. Um, and it's just got a really focused voice, uh, partly in due uh, to its body size, but also because the top just resonates like like mad. It's uh, it's an extremely thin top actually. Uh, when it was in uh, Marcus's shop getting a pickup installed in it, I asked I asked Marcus. I said, Hey, do you think I'd be able to put medium strings on that guitar? And he took he took his thumb and his index finger. And he pushed on the top, and I could just see the top start moving. And he's like, I don't think mediums would be a real good fit. So um, nonetheless, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very grateful owner of this instrument. And the original owner actually sent me um, the, the original tuners, the original nut, and I believe the original um, bridge pins, uh, which, was, which are fantastic to have as well. So it's kind of a, a, it's got a little bit of a story, but it's, it's, it's actually become my main guitar. I gig with it. I know it's a little bit goofy that I take a, a thirty, you know, a 1935 instrument out on the road, but it just it feels like a glove. You know, it fits perfect, and I just love playing it. Tony, it is time for small wins. All right. And, and before we get into small wins, and you know, maybe I'll say this a few more times, but you know, I really <coughs> like uh, reading off names, and so between now and this time tomorrow, I really hope you sign up for Tony's Acoustic <laughs> Challenge. Don't think about it. Just do it. You can't go wrong. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm really excited to, to name name names tomorrow. So I want to see – I just personally want to see Levi take another crack at a whole list of names because it was pretty good this morning. Um, One guy in the comments was like uh, – said something like um, – yeah, that was a good call. Not uh, trying not to, <laughs> not trying to pronounce my yeah. last name. It just makes me think of, um, you know, when you have a substitute teacher, you know, with a last name like Policastro, or or yours too, Levi. Cool. Yours is probably pretty easy to. Mine's pretty substitute. easy. Le I think Levi's is is the best yeah. out of the three of us. A lot of different. I've had uh, one correct pronunciation in my entire life. Yeah, from your parents. <laughs> 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 Uh, okay, shall we? <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Oh, yes. <clears throat> All right.
get in today in small winds. <laughs> we have Chris. The focus, the focused practice system you provide has motivated me to practice more this week than in years. Right. I've progressed so much in just four days that I decided to take the plunge with spousal approval, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I bought my first mandolin yesterday. Oh, right. Uh, after spending the afternoon uh, intoning and restringing it, I managed to learn two jigs and a reel last night. Thanks oh, for everything man. you guys do for all of us. And Ken stupid. says, uh, left shoulder's getting looser and moving it up and down uh, the fretboard quicker every day. Nice. Uh, Harold Small Winds. I've been trying to learn to play for 50 plus years and taking lessons for about six months. I had a lesson last night. My teacher played rhythm and I improvised over the chord progression. Had a great time. <laughs> yeah, nice job. Uh, P.S. <laughs> it was the first time I ever did this with live with another person. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Dean says, uh, thanks for the challenges. They're helping me exercise the left pinky and stop it from being sticky and at times redundant. Nice. Uh, Alan Small Wind. Uh, is playing at a Christmas party with a friend who has just taken up the violin. First time with an audience. Nice. And Pat says, I love getting out of my comfort zone, and Lesson 5 did just that. I will be able to apply this immediately when performing with uh, Denver Retrograss on Sunday. Oh, cool. Awesome. That's great to hear. All right, rolling with some more. Dave says, Small Wind, used the three-note chord progression from Day 5 and wrote a song. Sweet. Everett says, I'm finding the structure and basics in Tony's lessons super helpful. Thanks so much. Awesome. Nice. Uh, Richard says, went to my first ever jam session over the weekend, uh, hosted by Vic G in oh, San Bruno, cool. CA. Yeah. <laughs> Got to play or try some of my all-time faves, like Best of My Love. Uh, it's inspired me to start learning some songs of my own so I can bring something to the group next time. Uh, get ready to play Country Roads, y'all. Nice work. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Uh, Jerry says, my wife, who has not picked up a guitar before, asked me to let her strum on my acoustic I had in my hands for the first time, and I went back and got one of my others, and she observed me and gave it a first try. Uh, hashtag small wind and fam jam. Nice. First time. <clears throat> That's awesome. That's way cool. Okay. Uh, uh, Matthew, or Mathau, small wind, and now I'm a TAC member. Uh, I've waited for this public enrollment since I took part in the fretboard wizard course. Uh, nice. This one was so helpful for, for me. And a fam jam, uh, my little daughter, 17 months, tries to finger pick with my guitar. So this week of the 10-day challenge is for her. Thank nice. you for the great job. <laughs> cheers uh, cheers for the Zelda mug. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for that one. <coughs> All right. Cleet Small Win convinced the wife that a TAC membership would be a good thing for me to have. Now I just have to convince her about buying a new guitar. Uh, if only someone would make a video about that. Hmm. I think there's one floating around there somewhere. I think there yeah. is <laughs> as well. <laughs> it's actually really fun. And last one. small win for today, uh, Richard says, after being a TAC member for more than a year, after last week's challenge, I finally got online and started through the courses, uh, found there was lots I already knew, but also had to stretch to keep an ordered regular pace. Uh, that's good news. I've been known to wander off into the blue. <laughs> Um, and a hashtag big win, Bozeman, here I come. All right, fantastic. So, guys, I, I have a little uh, little treat, which you only know we'll be able to see, I guess. But um, so, Vic G's small win was about. Well, actually, that wasn't. That was somebody else who was talking about Vic G's uh, get together. Yeah. And so, I have a photo of that um, from the forums. But one thing that we don't really talk about during these, uh, you know, enrollment windows is is the community. Um, because those, that's kind of a surprise when you get in there. Yeah. A lot of people talk about how they just didn't they just didn't realize how big Tony's Acoustic Challenge really is until you get in there. Um, and so, you know, for for 2018, one of the things that we're trying to expand, you know, we're we're going to be investing big time in the community. We're trying to expand uh, the global network of jam clubs. Okay, so that's where people <coughs> go onto the member map. They find people close to them in their area. And then they, they put together a private group. They come up with a, a, a name for their club. Um, they get on the map so other people can find them. And then yeah. they create events and get together in person. And, uh, and it's you know, open for any level. You, know, you have beginners to you know, people who are more comfortable. And it's just been absolutely a huge blast watching these people yeah. get together. <laughs> it's um, so cool. They'll <laughs> Skype. You know, they'll, they'll do it simultaneously. So one time we had the, the East Coast yeah. jam group Skype over to the West Coast. Um, and it's just amazing. So here's a picture. This one happened, what, the, like two days ago? 
Here's a picture. Yeah, Check that out. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I want to see. I know. It's like <laughs> seven of them all with their guitars. It is so cool. So, uh, yeah, a lot more of that is going to be happening in, in 2018. So, Heck, yeah. What do you think? Well, I think uh, – well, I'm going to take some medication is, what I, is what's going to happen. <laughs> but um, I think we should – well, I, I want to thank – first of all, I want to thank you guys for joining today. Um, those of you who, who joined Tony's Acoustic Challenge, of course, thank you for, for becoming brand new members and welcome to the family. Get in there and, and click around and, and just uh, make yourselves at home and uh, uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves on the forums. For those of you who tuned into the live lesson today, thank you for being here. You guys are exactly who make this possible. Um, could not do this without you. And uh, so we did a little finger picking warm up today. We're kind of getting the, the blood flowing. And uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, it's going to be lick day. I've got a lick for you. It's called, uh, what did I call it? I call it railroad track pennies or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's got a story behind it. Um, I think you're really going to dig it. I will say this, that uh, the, the warm-up that we worked on today will segue so nicely into that lick. Um, so I'm super excited to share with you guys that lick tomorrow. And uh, gosh, until tomorrow, uh, have a great rest of the day. Uh, again, if you have any questions about Tony's Acoustic Challenge, just right there on the enrollment page, there's a live chat. Uh, we're we're going to be standing by. And um, gosh, have a great day. Thank you again. And we'll see you tomorrow at 11 for uh, day number seven of your 10-day challenge. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. My name is Tony Policastro. I'm part of an underground group of acoustic guitar enthusiasts you've probably never heard of. We're not here to play face-melting guitar solos or judge other guitar players. Our purpose is much greater than that. For us, it's about expanding our quality of life through music and having fun with our guitar, not just mastering it. Getting better at guitar is proof that we do have what it takes to be a guitar player, which means we can build stronger bonds with friends and create lasting musical family traditions. But if you asked a guitar snob or a music academic, they would turn up their nose and say their way is better. Yet this way of seeing the guitar is changing lives every single day. We follow a specific framework and set of values that keeps us focused on what matters most. Human connection, constant progress, and fun. It's happening, and we call it living the acoustic life. This is our acoustic life, and these are our stories.